This is the Coronavirus Global Update on the 4th of September. I'm Valerie Sanderson. The UK government is seeking fresh advice on giving COVID jabs to children over 12. A final decision is expected within days. Also, the fierce debate in Australia over reopening borders. And the pandemic, a recipe for weight gain and mapping the sounds of the world in lockdown. The chief medical officers of the four nations which make up the UK have been asked to decide whether to offer COVID jabs to all 12 to 15-year-olds. A number of other countries have been vaccinating this age group. But on Friday, scientific advisers on the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, the JCVI, decided against recommending the measure, saying the benefits on health grounds alone are small. So Mark Walport is former scientific advisor to the government. The JCVI looks through a very particular lens, which is the clinical safety of the vaccine against the effects of the disease itself. But what they don't look at is the wider issues, such as my child or my grandchild's health is also affected by their ability to go to school, by what happens in the family. As our medical editor, Fergus Walsh, reports, the final decision will be taken by the chief medical officers of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. The decision on whether to immunise all 3 million 12 to 15-year-olds in the UK is now on pause, while the four chief medical officers assess the wider non-health benefits, such as the positive impact on children's education of reducing outbreaks in schools. That review might take only a matter of days, and there's said to be optimism in government that this will tip the balance in favour. Politicians across Australia are struggling to agree on a plan to reopen international and internal borders, closed to curb the spread of COVID. The Premier of New South Wales, Gladys Berejiklian, is warning that her state could go it alone and push for the country's international borders to reopen. All of us as Australians have to accept that living with COVID is the future. It's not an option that any of us like, but it's an option we have to confront. Some 30% of Australians have been vaccinated and the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, says the current restrictions should be eased when the number reaches 70%, something the Premier of Western Australia, Mark McGowan, firmly opposes. At 70% two-dose vaccination or even 80% two-dose vaccination, the idea we deliberately import the virus into Western Australia by dropping the border with a state like New South Wales would just mean lots of people die. New evidence shows that people in the UK have been putting on weight during the pandemic. National Health Service figures show that people who signed up for their weight loss programme were on average more than two and a quarter kilograms heavier than people who started the same scheme before the pandemic. And the pandemic is being blamed. Dr Giles Yeo is an obesity expert at the University of Cambridge. He outlines the reasons why. The first, and this is going to be someone like me, before the whole world came crashing down, I had two different types of foods I would cook. I had weekday foods, and these are going to be very quick because I just came back from work, and weekend foods, which tend to be bigger meals and takes longer to cook. Whereas in the pandemic, I was cooking weekend foods all the time. I ended up eating, e- eating more weekend food. I think that's probably reason number one. But a second, probably broader reason is it was stressful. A time where it was stressful and you didn't know when it was going to end. And there are people who stress eat, you know, to comfort eat. And finally, a question for those in countries where the worst of COVID is hopefully in the past. Are you now missing the silence of lockdown, the absence of traffic noise and the flutter of birdsong on normally busy streets? The sound of a woodpecker and Sycamore Place in Aberdeen in the northeast of Scotland, recorded in lockdown. It was taped by the sound artist Pete Stollery, who's created a sound map of the world. What I did was get people from all over the world to send sounds in. Using Google Earth, I can put a little icon on the map and then clicking on that, you could access uh, the sound as it was in that particular location. 50% of the sounds that were sent were of birdsong that people were astounded that they they could hear. But there have been some really interesting ones that I think are are, a real document of the time. The Lord's Prayer as part of a church service that took place over Zoom. So it had about 30 people from all over the northeast of Scotland, all saying the Lord's Prayer at the same time from different locations with different qualities of internet coming in and out as they were doing it. Stay safe. That was the Coronavirus Global Update.